Gail can go to the um, part of the workshop webpage. I have under today there's one link. Notebook, the city I Python notebook. And use for this. So So I don't care whether you use uh, IPython notebook, IPython, plain, just type in the command Python. Um, but I'm going to go through, okay, as Terrence was, just going, to, going through these notes, talking about things. Um, if you're free to ask questions, follow along, try this yourself. Um, it should work unless you have really old versions of Astro Pi on your computer. So is there a way to like, put this web page to uh, Python notebook? Yes. So Aaron's not bad. Yeah. So so one way to do it is that if last time you did git clone, it was a repository, you can go in that repository and do um, git pull. We'll get the newest changes, provided you haven't made any changes. If it says something else, uh, anyway, it's, it's fine. I can also work. The other way is to just up there, download notebook. And so if you do that, then you can load. Um, you can put it in some folder and use that Python. So you know. So I'm actually gonna. I have this already opened on my computer. I'm going to go through it, so I'm going to change things. You should just go to the next input line, right? After you type that in, so that means it'll just work. Like after you type in import astro pi, it should just go to the next input line. Uh, import astro, astro pi. And if you're in the notebook, you shift enter. Yeah. Uh, press enter, and it should work. Right. If it gives you an error. All right. I, 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 And you're set. Right. So the reason the the reason to have you import Astro Pi is that uh, probably like four or five years ago, the situation in astronomy was that there were two, about three or four, um, three or four people trying to implement their own version of the IDL astronomers libraries, astronomer, um, what were they called? astronomy users library in Python. And these were kind of disconnected efforts, not really. Um, couldn't always use one, for one from the other. And honestly, it was carrying forward bad habits or bad design decisions from the IDL code into Python. AstroPy is Think of the same vein trying to make a core set of libraries for doing astronomy in Python um, and bringing together several other projects to do this. Um, and so pretty much this whole talk is going to be talking about the, some of the capabilities of AstroPy, which are actually quite extensive. So if I look at the link for the documentation, and it's, yeah, it's going to be stable. So there's quite a lot it can do. And if I go to the lower right there, to the latest one, there's a little bit more being added up, um, over time. So it's worth keeping in mind. I'll only touch on things. There's a lot more. The documentation is quite good. So one of the first things that you probably want to do is work with data. In astronomy, we use FITS files typically. And AstroPy loads them. Here's a little line for uh, having that capabilities available with a based on the FITS name. And then I'm going to load this FITS file from the internet called 
course head that fits. But you can probably guess what's in it. So fits files contain header data units, actually a list of header data units. You probably never worry about this if all your fits files only have one set of data in them. In um, DS9, if you open a fits file, we'll look for the first one that has an image. So you can live quite long being ignorant of the fact that fits files can contain multiple data. Um, but the fits astropy.io.fits does not let you live that ignorance that long. So there are two header data units that you see when you print out this thing that fits that open gives you. I'm only going to concern myself with the first one. The second one, um, I believe, was a mask. So, how, how much to trust the cells? You can actually see this. If you list, going to the second one, opening up the header. Well, let me. Open up the header and his name of table er.mask. So I'm going to assume that this isn't something to worry about and just use hdu list zero for this data. We do this. You can actually see quite a bit of information is accessible. Data comes back, the type is a NumPy array. So it integrates with NumPy that um, Terrence talked about last time. You can get things from the header, you can get the shape of the data. You can view the entire header if, you, if you'd like, as I did for the second unit. And change this so that it scrolls. We can see this is a picture from the Smith, the Smith Telescope. Retrieved using the MAST catalog, our MAST um, image retrieval service. With a lot of more information there. The programs may want to use when you're opening FITS files. So th these are and the equivalent of fits read as well as um, other functions in IDL to get the you know, to get common uh, um, things from the header. So to show what this is, if you're using the notebook, just use this line to make sure to make it in here and nice. If you're not using the notebook, Make sure to do plt.ion before you do IM show. IM show shows an image map. And I import CM for color maps for um to make this look a little nicer than the ugly MATLAB and stuff inspired color scheme. So for the first header data unit, you can grab the data of it. Get the next results. Any kind of um, manipulations you'd like to do, divide it by a number, add some headers, change some headers, completely possible. So here I've divided all the data by two. I've Change the filter to be changed. Change one of these. Or sorry, I've added a new header called fake. You can manipulate these both data and the headers. Um, and instead of a fits right in IDL, you're just telling the object itself to write it right out. So I do the PWD so that you see where to do this. This only works in IPython. So that was probably a quick way to go through FITS files. I don't know.
Anyone try loading up their own data? Plotting it simply, or plotting it with IM show. So this used to be called PyFits, this, um, this code. Uh, before it was, became part of AstroPy. So you can think of PyFits as kind of the legacy, um, the legacy code, and that's slowly being phased out. Um, gradually being phased out. So any code coming on the Space Telescope Institute, for instance, is using AstroPy for all new code as a policy decision. Likewise, the ASCII file uh, reader support is um, another Python code that used to be separate. That is now uh, built in AstroPy. Terence showed an example um, using Genfrey text in NumPy, but also Pandas has, a, has multiple ways to read ASCII files. Actually, quite a few ways. AstroPy differs in that it can read some astronomy formatted, or some astronomy formats. Which would have been good if I had linked to that. So why don't I go to the documentation? Find ASCII tables, get the list of files. So if you have any of these forms. Yeah. Why is it kind of an ASCII table? Can't you read, uh, say, UTF-8? That is a good question. That actually depends on the format. Yeah, so ASCII tables, yeah. So it doesn't have to be strictly ASCII. It's a bit of a misnomer. Um, but some of these do enforce ASCII. I believe Which ones? Some of the astronomy ones, you can have to use ASCII by the definition of the format. But yeah, so, so the question was if you use characters um, that are in ASCII, like Greek letters. Oh. Um, some of these allow that. LaTeX does, uh, LaTeX does not. HTML does, for instance. So, but the astronomy ones, This one is pretty auto magic. You can look, this is a comma separated file. And if you run this code, it figures out uh, the names of the columns and formats it nicely. Um, and you can retrieve individual rows and columns and whatnot. Uh, this is a generic. List of retail or real estate transactions in Sacramento. So this is an example of a CSU of a com separated, um, com separated file. An actual example of a um, IPAC format file. So something that can have, um, have names, have types, have units. Actually, although we'll talk about units later, it would be this. Actually, example from IPAC, for an IPAC formatted file. Just to open that real quick. Looks like this. The columns are defined by the vertical bars on the first row, which is a really weird format. I don't know if you could possibly make gen, gen from te text in NumPy recognize this. Or at least easily. But AstroPy recognizes this format. And we'll give you columns and whatnot. But it'll give you columns and data and figure out which ones are strings and which ones are uh, floating point numbers and all. So. Is this ASCII reader in parallel in design to uh, the first module that you introduced? Yeah, so there's an AstroPy.io that fits for reading and writing fits files, and ASCII 
Esther Pada Ayala ASCII for reading and writing various forms of text files. So both FIS files are just maybe some raw data from test yeah, files? Yeah, FIS files aren't necessarily text. Huh. They're actually... Um, it's definitely not they're... ASCII. So they can be ASCII and can code. Um, that, that, that's a good question. So, so FIS files can be ASCII, but they can encode um, or they can contain binary data. Um, also, I don't think they use the same thing a lot. I think they use like a slash, like a null byte or something for the line separator. Something you wouldn't typically do in an ASCII file. Um, yeah. Um, and the data, the numbers, so, so if you have a table in, in, in a FITS file, it could be an ASCII or it could be a um, floating point numbers. So floating point numbers have a different set of representation in ASCII versus just a regular 32 bit number. So yeah. FITS file could be mostly ASCII. And that's perfectly valid. BS9 and AstroPi will recognize that. So one of the more so something that's new to, to AstroPi as opposed to PyFits and ASCII tables for the predecessor packages include units. And this is kind of a fun one. Because units kind of suck. So I'm going to import the units submodule and just call it u. This is a convention. And this one has a lot of units. Actually, right here I can do u dot plus tab. And I see a lot of options. Many of which I've never heard of. Like a yada, well, yada fair I can you guess that. But a Z-box. Whatever that unit is. And actually, to skip a couple things, there is documentation. This is the Z-voxel. If you're familiar with voxels, which are like a three-dimensional pixel, I think, this may, may, this may make sense to you. But the point is, Basically, any unit under the sun, just about any unit under the sun, um, would be, uh, is defined in AstroPy. Any unit that we use regularly in astronomy, whatever D is. All right, moving on to units I, I would recognize. So, some common units. Uh, here's a group of them, and they're defined. As we can get their physical properties, not physical properties, we can get some of the things that get some of the things that AstroPy knows about them. Um, other ways to call them, what they actually physically are, which I'm not sure if I want to know what a voxel is, or what, what it thinks a Z voxel is, but let's say that D, I'm curious what it is. Oh. So electric dipole moments in units of D. So if you look at this a lot, you probably recognize this. The D bytes, or D bytes. You know, recognize this from Jackson? Wow. So it wouldn't be any fun to just play with only units. We can make composite units, things like acceleration, at a meters per second squared, which I found notebook. Um, oh, 
probably get something. I think you would get this. And you can combine together crazy units that don't make sense, but oh, they make sense. This is stone acceleration. Not typically how you write it, but however you want to add things together. You can also, and so this might be how it's displayed in, you know, in, in, in Python in the terminal, and this, this is just showing how IPython notebook prints it up. Um, units are fine. It's nice to have numbers for the numbers that have units. So that is something distinct called a quantity in AstroPy. We can even make arrays, or quantities out of arrays from NumPy. So here I've imported NumPy, made an array, and made it, um, and multiplied it by hertz to give it, to give something that has units of hertz. What's the data type of my data? It's actually a quantity. So if I use this REPR to get like a representative view of it, as they say, another way of looking at it. So yeah, the quantity is not quite a subclass of, of a NumPy array, um, but they're meant to be very compatible. So you can use NumPy functions. Um, use NumPy functions on uh, quantities. So there's a implicit typecasting from a NumPy array. Yes, they call it a NumPy. NumPy has support for that. And they've actually, um, the AstroPy community has actually helped with that. There were corner cases where you lose the units when you use NumPy. Um, that I don't know for how long that's been fixed based on AstroPy um, contributions. So looking in the documentation, I think there was something But yeah, so you could um, so you could take the dot product of two quantities using NumPy or um, any other NumPy function. But before you take the dot product, you might want to actually if I already use NumPy functions, you might actually want to manipulate them just the quantities themselves, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. If you do that. It actually works. So multiplying something with units of hertz times something with meter squared kilogram per second. So anyone recognize what that should be the units of? If I have a hertz times meter squared per times kilogram per second. Hertz, so. What's the other one? So this one's this one's hertz, and I'm multiplying it by six point six two six and negative thirty four meter squared times kilogram per second. Energy unit? Yeah. 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 It's an energy. Um, kilogram meter squared per second squared. Yeah. Anyone recognize what the six point six two six? I think we're pretty That Planck's constant, Planck constant. Yeah. No. Um, no. Wait. That number sounds familiar. Right. That's, that's, that's the amount of joules and. Uh, that's the age, right? Yeah. If it's in joules. Oh, size. I meant to do G. I probably hmm. miss some. Um, probably copied the wrong constant. Okay, fair enough. <laughs>
Well, it doesn't change the units. So this gives us something in hertz kilogram liter squared per seconds. It is a bit ugly. and a little opaque to what it is. You can actually tell, give an idea of what it is by looking at the unit and figuring out what the physical type is, energy. But we can simplify this. So all of these have a dot, uh, all quantities, you're able to do dot decompose, which expresses them as simply as possible. Sorry, with the simplest units as possible. Um, and also, you can express them with CGS or SI units. Although it's not perfect. So for instance, it says the SI units of this is meter units. So. So what I'd like to do is be explicit about what I want to convert this to. So I have something that's in, what was it, hertz, kilogram, meter squared per second. And I know it's an energy, so I could convert it to joules. Doing the quantity dot two, you dot joules, or the quantity that two of you that electron volts, if you want, converts it to any, um, anything that it's able to convert it to. So the units capability here in AstroPi is actually one of the more broadly useful things outside of astronomy. But there's so many astronomy units in here, um, and so many things that only make sense in astronomy that it's not very. It's obvious it's not meant to be general. Um, so here, for instance, if I'm wondering how, how many astronomical units it is to Orion, that's just one line. I know how many parsecs it is. Or let's say someone asked me how many light years it is to Orion. Oops. So I know it's. And there's a lot of names you can use for things. So I know it's 420 parsecs. And someone asked me about light years. I'm going to type that and press tab. And yay, that works. And so it's about 1,400 light years. So you can do like simple, quick astronomy um, you know, conversions very nicely with this. You put a unit of momentum, you would complain. Yes. So let's do 420 e dot parsec to e dot year. The year is. A long complaint. Unit PC is not a scaled version of unit year. And a lot of these uh, parsec is a length, and year is the time are not convertible. So they have to have the same um, physical type to be convertible, although I'll show you an exception to that later. And this could be useful. You can get uh, astropy includes many of the constants, so you never have to hard code in the mass of the Earth, because, I don't know, some catastrophic thing would blow, blow off the part of it, or a big asteroid hits, it changes it significantly. At least you'll never have it hard coded into your work. So. And usually you care about the units, so. Using AstroPi units at least keeps you consistent. Um, so I said when you convert things, they have to have the same equivalent type. 
I'll show you an exception. For physical type, I'll show you an exception. So this is one exception. Um, if you're dealing with a wavelength of light, or you're dealing with the frequency of lights, you can go back and forth. Um, Astrophys this concept of equivalency classes to allow you to convert between units that aren't really the same. Well, one of them, this U dot spectral, converts between wavelengths of light and frequencies of light and vice versa. Yeah. So things worth magic. So if you're curious, um, Like, the visible light would be like, I don't know, 5,000 angstroms or so? Yeah, they usually say like 4 to 700 nanometers, so I think that's. Yeah. yeah. So let's do that. And then convert it to hertz. So it's about 2 to 14 hertz. If you're wondering what the frequency of visible light is, uh, a couple hundred terahertz. Pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, another kind of equivalency um, is when you're when you're getting the flux from something. So you're measuring measuring the flux in your telescope. It's a watts per meter squared per yeah energy per second per meter squared. Um, but that depends on the um, how wide a band you measure that with in frequency space or in wavelength space. Right? So usually we talk about we talk about energies in terms of flux density. So how much energy per energy per second per meter squared per wavelength or per frequency. And it's a nice, you know, it's a simple conversion between the two of them. Between the F nu and F lambda, the flux density defined in two different ways. Um, you just have to actually remember that formula and do it based on whether or not you know the frequency or the wavelength of the light you're uh, observing at. So here's an example. Let's say we, we have F lambda and we want F nu. And we know either the frequency or the wavelength. We can convert between them using an equivalency class that's defined based on the um, based on the wavelength here and the frequency in the next line. So we can convert between two quantities um, using an equivalency that depends on so the little dot here depends on the wavelength you're using, the equivalent of the frequency. So, instead of remembering this formula, as simple as it is, but you still got to write it. I don't know, if you just know the wavelength, you have to write this as C over lambda F nu equals lambda F nu, and move the lambda to the other side, I guess? No, the C over lambda nu is the C over lambda to the other side. Yeah, so F nu is equal to lambda squared over C, F lambda. So you have to figure that out every single time, or just use astrophy. And it keeps track that your units are, are consistent. The units for F nu are typically written in Janskys. You don't have to do that. You can do it in watts per meter squared per, um, watts per meter squared per second per so, any questions about um, units? I don't think IDL has an equivalent to this. That's like as a general. Okay. So one of the other potentially difficult things to wrap your head around when you're doing astronomy, um, besides units, is the variety of coordinate systems. Um, does that take 
obsession into account. Ones that don't, ones that um, ones that are defined at a certain time, or the ones uh, where the definition depends on what convention you're using for when you use that time. So that's how I handles all of this with another submodule, the coordinates submodule. Almost all of it, almost everything you can do with this um, sky chord class. So upon importing it, I'll create a bunch of, hey, isn't that? Upon importing it, I'll create a bunch of sky chords. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. And you can see the output of most of them, all the ones with the prints. The from name grabs it from the network. So any delay in here will be from that. You can choose the coordinate system. So FK4 is usually what people mean when they say uh, B1950 coordinates. And FK5 is usually what they mean when they say J2000. Uh, so that's kind of defining where you define the, um, what point in time you define the equinox. Um, but by default, it goes with this ICRS standard, which is independent of that. So hopefully you never have to worry about what coordinate system you're using whether it's FK4 or FK5 or FK4 without some the eccentricity corrections or if it's um, hopefully you only work with ICRS. It's probably not realistic, but hopefully it's close enough because J2000 and ICRS are very similar. So, but AstroPy um, will recognize this and Actually, if I click that more link to bring up the documentation, still looking. So the coordinate systems should be listed somewhere. Okay, so. This is actually a graph of all the conversions it does between coordinate systems. So, alt as is your um, altitude um, azimuth coordinates. Uh, GCRS is your um, galactic center coordinate systems. Oh, as well, or galactic centrics up there. So, that's not geocentric. Well, anyways, hopefully you know which one you're using. If I go to the latest, so instead of the stable release, I go down. There's been a couple more. Um, obsessed ones and more links between them. So, which makes things quicker. Um, so there's more, and I think they have been working on making this alt as more general. Um, there's, there's a lot of support and a lot of things that you probably don't want to have to think about for coordinate systems. Like it's interesting corrections. Depend on how you define the coordinate system. That they've thought a lot about and used directly the code from IAU, SOFA. Um, that is actually included in, in AstroPy, but not publicly like accessible. Uh, so that the definitions that you have for the coordinate systems are the IAU's definitions. So it's a kind of powerful thing. So sorry for the tangent about coordinate systems. A bit annoying, but it's got, it, you just have the sky chord stuff manage it. You can make these coordinates, you can um, see what you've made. So these are, so the SC object I made had a, that was at 25 degrees RA and 35 degrees de declination. The useful thing, you can transform this. So you can see it, um, although you could have FK4 at any, um, any time. 
uh, or galactic coordinate systems using, using L and B. So this guy cord handles those transformations. You can also do uh, math between uh, uh, manipulations of these uh, separations that you used. So this says that it's 100, 108 degrees separates. Um, that SC object from this SC2. And if I wanted, I could do, I could convert this to an arc second. And what is that? 390,000 arc seconds separates these two points in the sky. And it'll do this even though. This one's in galactic coordinates, SC is in ICRS. It'll do the coordinate conversions. Um, I'll do that using the, I, the IAU uh, codes that are technically defining these coordinate systems. So there are some exceptions. Galactic is not. Galactic coordinate systems are not actually defined by right, any standard body. Um, but for most things, astro pi is likely more accurate than other codes. But are accurate in terms of following the international convention. One of the useful things is with FITS files that I didn't mention before, is actually figuring out what the pixels mean so in terms of where you're looking on the sky. So, to do that, we need to extract the information that the FITS files have about um, their coordinate system. This WCS object, or WCS class, to astropy WCS, can just do that. This is something that's very, um, basically shows the capabilities. This has the capabilities of WCS global coordinate systems in FITS files. So this will probably have more work done on it to make that more general. Because with the next generation telescopes, FITS files can't accurately represent um, the kind of transformations you have between um, detected coordinates and actual on the sky coordinates. Um, so I'm guessing despite the, the astrophile WCS being very stable for a long time, that's going to have a lot more capabilities. Future. So as an example of what this contains. So, how you do the mapping, uh, TAN is one type, there's others. The RA and DEC at some pixel, the pixel that you're using at some reference pixel, reference pixel that you're using. The, this is a matrix that defines how the sky is rotated with respect to your FITS file, um, and that axis defines the size of the data on the FITS file. Um, so this defines the coordinate system. So can we change this? Yes. Um, this is in the header. Yes. So if you do this, so you could change the header. And you could change any of these values in the header. And then when you make a WCS object, it would have those um, three values. So that would be a, yeah, a simple way to fix the, ast the astrometry, but probably not a very accurate one, because it's not um, and, uh, there, uh, uh, there should be a better way to uh, something. Yes, there is. There is a package called Reproject. It, it, it's basically a Python version of Montage. I don't know how well developed it is. I think it was meant to be a um, replacement, replacement for Montage for, for APLPY. So, I don't know how far along that is. Yeah. Yeah, so. So you can change these values, but 
changing your reference pixel left or right in a projection, in, in, in a, this kind of projection, I don't know what that does to the other, to these other numbers. I think you would have to think about that very carefully, which is why you use a package to do that for you. But with this information, you can say, I have a coordinate in, I don't know, RA deck in ICRS coordinate system. What pixel value does it correspond to? Or the other way, I have a pixel value, like 5, 5. Give me a sky chord that corresponds to, um, or give me a sky chord that corresponds to pixel 5, 5 uh, using this one coordinate system. How do you create this? I believe you can choose the frame. But probably not that way. So SkyCore and AstroPy that I know that fits and AstroPy that WCS all allow you to manipulate, all allow you to um, interpret the or take something like M101 and figure out what pixel value it corresponds to, or something like a catalog position. Uh, even though I haven't, don't have notes for that. There is actually uh, there is actually functions for searching in a sky catalog. So sky code is kind of a higher level thing for um, for managing position information, things on the sky. So, so, reading FITS files, reading ASCII files, uh, doing units, and doing the coordinate transformations, I think are pretty core, low-level stuff. Uh, even though you're high-level interfaces to the libraries, and uh, particularly Fortran, I do this. I also want to mention, in like 10 minutes or so left, other capabilities that AstroPy has. So via table, if I look at, so second example of a, um, so so VO is um, sent a virtual observatory. It's a uh, it's a project to allow you to data analysis for, and get data easily online, uh, collaboratively. So just as an example of the kind of things that VO projects are trying to facilitate, here's a search with MAST, um, which is a service provided by Space Telescope Institute, giving me some all images, and I think if there was available, there's UV space images. Um, these are one of the pro stars. As you can see, it doesn't show up well in, in the class. But I want to make the point here. So there's an export button. So you can do CSV or VO table. This is a these, this is the VO table is a standard form for um, these projects that want to share their data, or these databases that want to share their data, or the archives that want to share their data. As another example, I'm going to look for what data is available for the same same target in uh, Vizier, Pfizer, however you pronounce it. And there's some SDSS data, Spitzer, a lot of information. And likewise, I can download the data via tables. 
So, uh, this is actually a fairly complicated data format because while FITS files were made up of a list of header data units, um, this can be a little more, these are still, these are considered a list of tables. And they're meant for tabular data, um, not just numbers, but things like all the information that SDSS gives you about this source, um, which is some strings, is some numbers, um, is an identifier, unique identifier. So the view tables are actually something configurable way to grab, show an example. But I just want to point out that you can read those in AstroPy and how relevant they are can depend on how much um, archive circuit you do. I think it's mainly that it's more free form and also um, and so, so for instance FITS files they have standards for what comments are acceptable or not what comments what um, what a what do you call it the, the header is made up of uh, things with like names and values um, the, the header, the content, in, the content in the header is restricted by limitations from Fortran, and the, the, that got encoded into the standard. So, for instance, there's a maximum line width, um, there's a maximum name for the. Um, Trying to think the names of the information in the header. Um, but so, so the VO table doesn't have those kind of limitations. Um, There's also kind of a mixed bag with it being XML um, that you could say it's more portable than these FITS files. That could depend on the NVNS, or that it could depend on your processor, how you read it. Um, I don't know anyone who doesn't use an Intel compatible processor to read the FITS files. So how well in advance that is in practice And more, yeah, so, so flexibility in this format. Flexibility over a piece of use. So just to make aware, if you get a VOT file, ask your pocket to read it. Another example of something that I don't have experience with, um, but there's a lot of work being done on it, and they're hoping to really like push this. It's like an AstroPy 2.0 or 1.5 or something big feature called um, the work done on it um, is modeling. So let's say, I don't know, I guess a Kepler light curve would be like this upside down. Um, maybe a spectrum could look like this. Given that I work on spectra, I'll say this could be a spectra. All I'm doing here, all I'm doing here is just taking the Gaussian, adding some random noise to it, and plotting it. So some fake data. Show a demonstration of this capability, this capability in AstroPy. So what they're working on adding is similar to the curve fit, uh, model fit, model fitting as well as a standard way of parameterizing models using astropod, or using astronomy models. Um, so particularly broken power law models. Um, things that things that go linear and then power law and then linear again. Um, so, uh, well, actually quite a few models if you go in astropod.modeling. Documentation. Yeah. Which they have under a, a, a core feature. So, I don't know if you want to move that. 
So this is an example of taking that same data as before, fitting a Gaussian model. There's one more simpler things, uh, using a least square fit, fitting routine. This is something you can do with SciPy. Um, but the point is to use that you can do in SciPy by making your own function do the Gaussian. Um, by making your own function do, uh, I guess, King uh, Fisher's a survey. That density profile. King profile? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you can write out the equation to the King profile. Um, but the point of this submodule is to have common models like that that can just fit to your data very easily and have parameters. Um, so for instance, for this Gaussian, print out the, the results of that fit, and you have the various parameters that are used. Uh, so a Gaussian is very simple, but you can do other, uh, other models, and this is something that they're still adding to. So. The last thing I want to mention, I wanted to keep this on there an hour today, uh, is that I feel like a DT would be really good to if it was here. Uh, cosmology calculations, and particularly different cosmologies. So, for instance, if I load the cosmology that was the best fit for the WMAP nine year mission, um, by convention, you import it as Cosmo wherever your cosmology is, and print out h naughts, the Hubble constant, the current time, from the WMAP 9 year mission. You can print out the age at redshift of 1, and various other calculations if I do cosmo dots and tab, lots of other, well, lots of constants, Lots of calculations you can do the co moving distance in this cosmology, um, co moving volume a couple times. Yeah, the kiloparsecs, or the kiloparsecs of proper distance per arc second. So, you use these calculations regularly. Um, these calculations regularly for high redshift stuff. Just load whatever the cosmology you want and change it very easily. For instance, if a plant 2013 cosmology comes out, plant 2013 best fit um, parameters, you recalculate. You can recalculate your age. So the age at redshift of one is now slightly younger. You can make and you can rerun your whole scripts and everything will still work with the slightly newer numbers. If you are playing with different cosmologies, you can make your own. So here I'm importing a thing to make a flat lambda CDM, so flat uh, dark energy plus cold dark matter model a, or cosmology. I'm starting it off with these parameters, which so H naught, I think. This is omega m in the current time, and this would be omega. I'm actually not sure what that is. The A for documentation. No, it's not in that. So there are other cosmologies you can do here if you don't want lambda CDM or if you don't want a flat model. You want to play around with one with a curvature 9 equal to 0. Or vary the curvature and see how it seems like you're talking about it. Yeah. So that's my little like summary of important parts of Astro Pi. Um, as I said, the documentation. 
I find it fair, I find it fairly good, and there's quite a bit more to this. There's also um, if you go to the AstroPy um, homepage, there's just somewhat well designed. Get help for the documentation, blog pages, all over reads, contribute. That is really nice to do if you're feeling like you have time and want to help out with. Anything, adding your own models, adding some, um, helping out with documentation, correcting spell checking, spelling mistakes that everyone makes, um, to contributing code. They actually point out how you, um, they actually point out issues that seem easy to do uh, or can be done very quickly without, as well as what level of um, understanding you need of the existing code to help out. But what I want to point out is these affiliated packages. So these are things that use AstroPy, or are supposed to use AstroPy. Um, so not, um, not have duplication of functionality. Um, that can you add to it in some way. So the most notable is in there. So Jenga is like a, as far as I can tell, I haven't actually used that. I think it's a DS9 competitor in Python. Um, but you can use it from the Python command line. Um, APLPY is one I want to also mention. This, instead of plotting, if we go to that horsehead nebula picture that I plotted with IAM show, Netplotlib. So APLPY also plots the fits files in Netplotlib, um, but it does it replacing it does it replacing the tick marks and coordinate systems and whatnot for astronomical for, for the coordinate systems for the world coordinate system. So it'll say um, actually excuse me, let me show a little. So it does it formatting the um, the axes labels and x and tick labels in you know, the way you want to respond. Um, not needed. I mean, you can like uh, like I said, you can do I am show show the same thing. Um, it also adds some nice things like scale bars, um, showing the beam size. I think of. Um, common plotting things in, in, in astronomy. So that's a really useful um, affiliate package. Also, AstroQuery is where, actually where I've used VO tables the most, basically, because AstroQuery queries databases um, throughout, databases throughout the internet that you may or may not have access to, and if you don't, you can get your password or whatever, and lets you download data, or download information, or query data, or figure out what stars are nearby. Um, so this is that, so I find this useful. If you're about to publish a paper on, um, I don't know, M86, you're wondering if there's any VLA data for that. So probably oh, one of these, the NRA, NRAO one actually, specifically. Here, I'll let you look that up very quickly. So rather than trying to hunt, hunt down the web page. Um, and then finally, 
spike utils, float utils, and CCD proc um, are for analyzing and reducing data. And those three are likely going to go into AstroPy. They're still being worked on. CCD proc is the newest for doing CCD data reduction. Uh, spec utils is for um, reducing and analyzing one dimensional spectra. Boat utils is for doing photometry. That's probably the closest to being um, included in the next version of AstroPy. Uh, but I want to point these out when people ask you, are, are you able to do um, data reduction in Python? These are the packages being worked on to do that um, with the same kind of standards of automated testing of um, automated testing, good documentation, hopefully consistent style and um, API. So, so when you do IM show, if you give IM show a two dimensional array, like this, if you give it a two dimensional array like this, it'll um, it'll do the color based on that, based on the value of each thing. If you give it a three dimensional array or one of those dimensions has a length of three then it will assume that that's a color. So I am show, we'll do the color maps for, um, do the color maps for grayscale images, for images that are uh, just in intensity. But I am show, we'll, we'll show you a three color image if you have the data for that. But you probably want to scale it. So when you put those three images together in the one array, Put in the IM show. How do you do that? Um, you can vary the scale to scale the different colors. So, so yeah, APLPY. So APLPY has that. So APLPY has that, um, and we do that a lot. week Mike is talking about um, in recent social media. Um, it, it might be a, 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 a little astronomy tilted. I think that's okay for most people here. But I so so you think of professional use of social media for finding jobs and accounts. That's my understanding. So that would be next Wednesday. <laughs>